God, the anointing to touch our ears, to touch our hearts, God, to touch my mouth, God. Lord Jesus, let me be an oracle, God, for you. Father, and I just surrender to you, Jesus. God, not my will, but thy will be done, God. I surrender to you, God. Let your voice be heard, Lord. And Lord, I, I decrease, God. I willfully surrender to you, Jesus. Let no, none of the words that come out of my mouth be from me, God. Let it be from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I've been preparing for a little while uh, for today, and um, Pastor had felt directed to speak about prayer, and it, it really lined up with God, how God had been dealing with my own heart over the last couple of weeks. Um, and there's so many aspects of prayer that we can talk about, but I'll just start with the scripture, amen. Mark 1, 35, and it, it says here, in the, early, in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up. He left the house and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. Amen. He was praying that morning. He got up before it was even light outside. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 1, it talked about the day that he had had before, which is a day that must have been exhausting. He, uh, he had basically been preaching in the synagogue, casting out a devil. There was a devil that cried out of a man there and said, are you coming to destroy us before our time? He revealed who he was. He went on to Peter's, uh, Simon's uh, wife's mother's house to heal her of sickness. And the Bible says in chapter 32, and even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils, the, the devils to speak, because they knew him. <laughs> and that's when it goes on to say that he woke up early the next morning to pray. I don't know about you, but if I had a day like that, I might think that the next day is a day of rest. Amen? Amen. It's a day for me to probably regain my strength, sleep in a little bit, maybe get some breakfast with the wife <laughs> later on in the day, like three, amen. I mean, that's a pretty powerful day. But it really tells something about Jesus Christ. It tells them that he was a man of prayer. And like I said, there's so many different aspects of prayer. And when I talked to God about it, when he talked to me about it, what I really felt led to talk about the aspect of prayer is brokenness. The aspect of brokenness when we humble ourselves and we come to our knees and we stand before the or we, we kneel before the Lord and we cry out to Him. That aspect of brokenness is what I really felt God has been dealing with me lately. But also the aspect that the Lord, who was perfect, had to surrender His flesh to the will of the Spirit. He had to experience brokenness. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that that uh, nobody, no servant is above his master. Amen. So in other words, if my Lord and my Savior had to deal with his flesh, I'm going to have to deal with my flesh. Amen. To be honest with you, with all the things about demons and, and uh, Satan and the spirit of the world, the one that, that Pastor has talked about, and the one that I, I concur is the biggest enemy that I have is my flesh. Amen. Its will frustrates me to no end. It frustrates me because it puts me in a position where I am walking outside of God's will. I'm walking outside of his blessings. I'm walking out of his, uh, his plans for me. Amen. And when I do that, it's it very frustrating for me. But God has created a way for me to deal with that flesh. And I thank God for it. As Paul said in Romans chapter 7, what I don't want to do, that is what I do. And what I do want to do, that's what I don't do. Who will save me from this body of death? Thank you, Jesus Christ. And it, it, Jesus is the one that's going to save us from this body of death. Amen. Jesus is the one that's going to allow us to operate in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's the brokenness. Why brokenness? Amen. Because we are utterly depraved. That's what the Bible says. And if I sound depressing, I'm not trying to be. Because ultimately there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. There's a bright light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to deal with this flesh. In our utter depravity, our flesh will never, ever do the will of God. And it has its own will. And it's cursed. And it has to be dealt with. Prayer is a major way in which we carry our cross. And 
we crucify this old man. Hallelujah. And when we learn to pray, it is a great way for us to get results of what God wants in our life. Amen. Because only then will we, that frustration is going to go away. And we're going to have peace and joy. And prayerlessness is a major indicator of, we, of that we are walking in the flesh. I've had seasons where prayer was very difficult. And I, no doubt I was wrestling with my flesh. Now, there are times when we have time to pray a lot. And there's times and seasons when we, when we are just constantly uh, just in maintenance mode. Amen? Amen. But the Bible says in, in uh, I think it's Matthew 7, 2. It says, with what measure you need, that's what the measure you're going to get back. Amen? And I don't know about you, but I want Jesus Christ in my life. Yes. And I've experienced the abundant life in His Spirit. And that's when my, the, the meat that I was measuring was larger than at other times. Amen? I don't want a thimble full of God's power in my life. Right. I don't want a thimble full of, of just His grace. Amen? My wife has got a collection of coffee cups that would probably horrify the average person. They are so large. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, baby. <laughs> but you know what? When my wife wants some coffee, or even when I do, I grab one of those things too. I don't want just a little bit of coffee. I want a whole lot. And so in order for me to get the right amount of coffee, I need to come with what in my hands will fulfill the right amount of coffee. Amen? And that's what Jesus is telling us. Don't come. We, we can come to him with a thimble. But the truth of the matter is, well, when we come to him with a bucket, guess what God's going to do? He's going to fill it with a bucket of himself. He's going to fill us, amen, with what measure we need, amen. And I, the times that I really feel God pulling me, the, the, the greater the measure that I give him, the, the greater the measure that I give him, the more that I want. Because I see the blessing. I see the power. I see him transforming me. I see answered prayers in ways that I did not see when I was just given a little one, a little bit. Amen? Amen. Amen? The flesh has to be dealt with. Jeremiah 17, 5 says this, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm. In other words, he, re he resides in the power of flesh to be his strength. And whose heart departed from the Lord. That's the one thing about the flesh. That flesh, when I give it even an inch, it's going to take a mile. It's going to take a mile, and it's going to take me a mile outside of the direction of the presence of the Lord, where I want to be. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. And the contrary, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. In verse 7 of Jeremiah 17. And whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. In other words, it's going to be no sweat when the drought comes. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit, always yielding free fruit. Amen? Amen? Who is that person? It's a person that trusts in the Lord. Yes. Amen? It's a person who's praying. It's a person who's yielding to God and yes. saying, not my will, but thy will. Amen. Amen? It's a place where our flesh is disarmed. My flesh is disarmed in prayer. And the spirit man is armed. Notice the contrast that Jeremiah makes. One is cursed. Cursed is the man that trusted in man. I don't care who you are and where you come from. This spiritual law is still in operation. God is not mocked. Whatever a man shall sow, that shall he reap. Amen. Doesn't matter who I am. I could be the president of the United States. I could be, I could be David Bernard. I could be just the, the newest convert coming into the church. Cursed be the man that trusted the man. It will never work out if I am leaning on my own flesh to, to especially do what my inner man wants. Which is to do what God wants me to do. Amen. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. He's blessed. Amen. The cursed man is like a he's like a heath that's that uh that's in the desert. A heath is a, a brush that has no leaf. It's dried out. It has no fruit that it bears. Very shallow roots, and it's in the desert. So there is no life anywhere. Amen. But on the contrary, 
we see the, the, the connection with Psalms chapter 1. The blessed man is that tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. Okay, so she's, the tree is blessed, and so connected to the water of life. Here we're going with the Spirit. We're connected with the Spirit. That river is the river of living waters that our Lord pro provides. Amen. But the parched place where the heath is, amen, it's not, it's not barren fruit. And it's not even seeing when goodness comes. It said it shall not see uh, when, when the goodness comes. That's what we're talking about is a heath. Amen? So in other words, the goodness is all around maybe. But it cannot connect with the goodness of God. And when I'm dry and I am outside of God's will. Or if I'm in a dry place where I'm not seeking the, the face of God. Where prayer is very small. Even when I'm doing the work of God. I am not seeing any good. I'm not connecting with God's good. On the, on the flip side of that, God, when he leads me that time of secret prayer, where in Matthew chapter 6, I shut myself up in the closet, and I connect with God, you know, it's not even about feeling. Sometimes I don't feel anything when I'm praying. I am just praising God. I'm praising God. I'm worshiping Him. I feel nothing sometimes. But there is still something going on in the spirit realm. Amen? I can praise Him. I can worship Him. I cry out. I declare His word over me. And I can do that. And, and it's not vain repetition. It's, the be it's giving God my best. It's calling out to Him. And crying out, God, I need you. And again, I may not feel anything. But I'll tell you one thing I do see, though. I see God's power working around me. I shut myself up. And yes, I feel His presence at times that I need it and I weep before Him. But even at times when I don't feel anything, there's fruit to be, to be bare, bare. Amen? It's something that's so beautiful and wonderful, yet I can't explain it. I can't explain how that is. That, that God, I, 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 I'm pressing into you. I'm pressing into you. Maybe I don't feel anything. But look what's happening, God. Doors are opening. Amen? As, 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 as God said through the prophet Isaiah, he said that I, I'm going to go before you as Lord. I'm going to make the crooked places straight. Amen. I'm going to make the mountains flat. Hallelujah. I'm going to shatter the bars of, of the gates of brass. And I'm going to cut asunder the bars of iron. There's something about the spirit of God moving in my life that, that comes with the fruit of prayer. That he moves in these things that I could not budge in my flesh. All of a sudden they're moving. Amen. All of a sudden, doors are opening. Amen. All of a sudden, the things that I'm touching are being blessed rather than I'm being frustrated. That's me dealing with my flesh. That, that is crucifixion of the flesh. And as pastor has reminded me, faith really has nothing to do with feeling. It has to do with faith and trust and believing in God. Amen. This contrast is something that really spoke to me. Hallelujah. Prayer is that place where we are disarming that flesh. Yeah. We're disarming it. No more. No more flesh. No more your will, flesh. That's not going to get me anywhere. As Moses took the army of Israel, their first, their first uh, uh, war was with the uh, Amalekites. The Amalekites. Moses had to raise up his hands, if you remember. And he, and he had help. But Joshua was battling. And when he lifted his hands down, they, they lost the battle. But either way, when you look, when you look at it, it is a, a, a type and a shadow of the flesh. Because the Amalekites were cursed with a curse. God said that they're, they're never going into heaven. Yet they, they, they're going to struggle. The people of God are going to struggle with the Amalekites from generation to generation. Which indicates that the flesh, everybody is going to have to deal with this old flesh. Amen. Forever and ever. You know what? Well, until we raise, we get up to glory, get these new bodies. Amen. But what I'm saying is, Nobody can escape this war with the flesh. We're going to have to learn to subdue it. i got to learn to subdue it. Amen. Ultimately, it's the, it's the direction of man's trust that determines the whole cast of his life. And when I make prayer a priority, I am putting my trust in the Lord. I am putting a cast, if you will. If I am molding a future where God is going to lead me. Amen. Amen. And the duality about God is... You know, sometimes I give the enemy too much credit. I say, you know, 
the devil's doing this, the devil's doing that. But you know, the Lord said in Deuteronomy 32, 39, that it's the Lord that killeth and make alive. Yeah. It's the Lord that wounds and heals. There's not, neither is there anyone that can pluck me from my hand. Amen. 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 Nobody can take me from God's hand. And so when I'm going through things, seasons, whatever, uh, frustrations, they're not there to destroy me. They're there for me to humble myself, to crucify the flesh, to learn that God, He is Lord. Hallelujah. This is the flesh versus the spirit. This is where the rubber meets the road, I believe, in the Christian walk. This is the foundation of day-by-day -day warfare, where I lead myself to the presence of God, and I say, God, I'm crucifying the flesh. I believe that it is the biggest frustration for God. God can deal with devils, no problem. God can deal with the spirit of the world in the heart of a believer. But if we don't move our flesh, then that's when things get rough. But the truth is, God is in control. Yes. Whatever we're dealing with today, whatever you're dealing with, God has got a plan. And I believe that the fruit of whatever we're dealing with, uh, or, or the plan of God, is to lead us to Him. To crucify our flesh. To, to, to abandon everything to Him. To abandon my plans for His plans. To abandon my pride, my pride, my fleshly desires to His desires. It's of my flesh versus my spirit, man. As I was reading Galatians, and God, it illuminated. It was like a rainbow word for me. In the salutation to the Galatians in chapter 6, verse 18. Paul says, brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. He said, the grace of God be with your spirit. See, the grace of God is with my the spirit. The grace of God is with the spirit within me. He said, spirit lowercase s. And so, if we try to connect God's grace with our flesh, it'll never happen. If I walk and I try to do things even for God in my flesh, the grace of God is never with that. It'll never be with that. But the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with my spirit. So when I yield to God and I do spiritual things like pray, when I cry out to Him, grace is flowing. Then I see grace flowing, and I see uh, I see uh, a reception of His grace. Yeah. I see grace pouring into my life, and I see things just moving that uh, that I just could not move before. And again, what measure I meet, that's what is given back to me. So there's times when I will just pray, and I pray over my sons, and I, and I pray a few prayers, and you know what? I thank God that He's protected me. But there's times when I really buckle down. And I, I, I want to do this, amen? I feel God calling me to do this. To crucify the flesh. And I give him a little bit more. Yeah. I give him a little bit more, and guess what comes back to me? A greater measure of his grace. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then, then I'm starting to see desires. That, that, that I want to do Bible studies. See, starting to open up a little bit, amen? Right. Not that it's my work at all, because no flesh will ever glory before God. Right. No flesh will ever glory before God. Yeah. And oh, how deceiving the flesh is. It hungers for glory. Yes. It hungers for the praise of man. Yes. But I'm cursed when I trust in man. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Our flesh nature will never receive the grace of God. Paul said that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with our spirit. When we neglect our inner man, our true self, the flesh nature will rule. And the grace of God will never be with the flesh nature. And prayer is a place where we receive the new man and the inner man. Because the truth of the matter is, and how deceiving the, the nature is. See, we are, I am, a spirit. I live in a body, and I have a soul. What my body will tell me is I am a body. I might have a spirit within me, maybe. But and I, I have a soul. And that's where the deception is. And so when I come back to the things of God, I have a fresh revelation of who I am. I am a spirit. I live in a body, and I have a soul. So I'm not going to do what this tent wants me to do. I'm going to do what the spirit wants me to do. And just spending time in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Whether I have understanding or not, there is something that happens where that nature is just subdued. There is a supernatural process in prayer where my flesh nature is subdued. And I give glory to God. 
because something happens in the secret places. Hallelujah. Light is coming into my life, bursting forth. Amen. Hallelujah. I can actually obey the will of God and the word of God when my spirit man is strengthened. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about. Hallelujah. I want to, uh, I want to, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to see his will in my life. Right. Amen. This world is passing away quickly. It, it will be unto me if I do the will of my flesh up until the Lord comes back. And what I thought I was, and what I thought I had was nothing. And it's all gone. I have to deal with this flesh. And I got to deal with it yesterday. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are a spirit created in the likeness of God Almighty. And so we receive grace from God by prayer to Him. Colossians, uh, Colossians chapter 3 talks about many of the, uh, uh, he said, if you're, if you're, if you be risen with Christ, let your affections be on things that are above. Amen. The flesh don't want to do that. But the spirit does. My spirit does. It wants to focus on what God wants. It doesn't want to 